Hey there, all you thrill seekers and paranormal enthusiasts. Get ready to dive into a chilling world where spine-tingling tales of haunted schools and eerie events will keep you on the edge of your seat. From classrooms that echo with ghostly whispers to playgrounds with lurking spirits, these stories are sure to send shivers down your spine. So please hit that like button, subscribe, and don't forget to turn off the lights as we explore these spine-chilling school stories that you won't be able to forget. Jackson Miller was a ruthless and cunning high school senior in a seaside California town. Although bright, he often used his intelligence to manipulate others. He was feared and loathed by his peers, and his notorious exploits were whispered about by students and staff alike. On the day before his graduation, Jackson met his fate on the Pacific Coast Highway when he lost control of his jeep and launched it over the edge onto the jagged rocks. His body and jeep was a twisted mess of bloody body and metal parts. The news spread quickly, and the town was left with the unnerving feeling that it was not the last they would see of him. In the days following the accident, a foreboding aura descended upon the school. Whispers of Jackson's spirit spread like wildfire, as did strange occurrences. Lockers slammed shut on their own, mysterious scratches appeared on desks, and unnerving messages were scrawled on the walls of the classrooms. Even though Jackson had passed, his malevolence lived on, terrorizing those who had once scorned him. Jackson's spirit intensified its grasp on the school, growing more sinister by the day. Electronics malfunctioned, lights flickered, and chilling gusts of wind blew through the halls. In the wake of his reign, Jackson's former victims found themselves baffled by unseen forces thwarting their every move. At night, the school building quivered with terror, as the tormented wails of the damned echoed through the halls. They were the sounds of Jackson and all those he'd tormented, trapped within the school. His obsession with obtaining the diploma he was denied in life grew stronger, fueling his reign of terror. Rumor of a loophole that would allow a posthumous diploma spread among the students and staff. A group of students, led by an unlikely hero, a timid girl named Sophie, decided to research the school's policies to free themselves from the malevolent force haunting them. As they dug through piles of paperwork long forgotten, they felt Jackson's spirit watching, lingering nearby, biding its time. When they finally discovered the solution, they knew the only chance they had was to present their findings to the school board and have them approve Jackson's posthumous diploma. At last, the fateful day arrived. The school board assembled, as did the students and teachers who found themselves drawn to the meeting, unable to escape the suffocating atmosphere that now permeated the air. As the meeting began, and the documents were laid bare, the room grew colder and darker, and everyone could feel Jackson's anger surging. With each argument the students presented, the room trembled, lights flickered, and shadows danced. Fear gripped everyone in the room, knowing Jackson was poised to strike if the vote did not go his way. Finally, the school board chairman announced their decision, Jackson's diploma would be granted. The moment the decision had been made, a high-pitched scream rang throughout the room. Shadows swirled, and the oppressive air lifted, but it wasn't a realization or change of heart that had come over Jackson's spirit. No, it was only the first phase of his plan. The diploma granted, but Jackson's thirst for revenge remained unquenched, 
And now, with that much more power, he turned his focus on anyone who had ever looked down upon him or stood in his way. And so, the school remained haunted, haunted not by sorrow or remorse, but by a force of pure, malevolent fury called Jackson Miller. In the small town of Florissant, Missouri, there was a cemetery known as the Leaf Brown Cemetery. For years, it was a peaceful resting place, but the quiet sanctuary didn't last forever. In the 1950s, with Florissant rapidly expanding, the decision was made to repurpose the land for a new neighborhood and school. The graves were exhumed and relocated, or so they thought. Parker Rhodes Elementary was built on the old cemetery site, becoming a hub of activity and learning for future generations. As children filled the halls and laughter echoed across the playground, memories of the old graveyard seemed to vanish. Everyone had moved on, except for the forsaken soul that had been left behind. For a while, there were only whispers in the halls about the odd sightings and phantom encounters. The students claimed that a ghostly presence haunted the school. They described her as a woman in a black dress, long wavy blonde hair, and a blank expression where her eyes should have been. This ghost seemed to have a strange affinity for the children, while the teachers and faculty remained blissfully unaware of her existence. Curiosity was sparked among the students, who couldn't help but investigate the ghostly claims. As they delved into the history of the school and its foundation, they came across old archives describing the relocation of Leaf Brown Cemetery. To their shock, they discovered that one grave had been accidentally overlooked during the relocation process. The restless spirit was none other than Mary Livingston, a former resident of Florissant, forgotten and left behind in her eternal slumber. As time went on, the ghostly presence became bolder in her attempts to make her presence known. Doors would slam shut, whispers and footsteps echoed in the empty corridors, and students would see different variations of Mary's no-eyed visage on school grounds. The haunting reached a peak when she began to appear in the restroom mirrors, leaving students terrified and, ultimately, forcing school authorities to address the ghostly issue. With the town now aware of the disturbing occurrences at Parker Rhodes Elementary, experts were called in to investigate the claims. It became evident that Mary Livingston's spirit was bound to the school, her anguish deepened by the failure to move her remains. The decision was made to locate her grave and relocate her along with the rest of the cemetery's former residents, hoping this would bring peace to her tormented soul. A ceremony was held to rebury Mary's remains in the designated cemetery alongside her friends and family. The students and faculty of Parker Rhodes Elementary gathered together to pay their respects and seek forgiveness from the spectral woman they had come to know over the years. As Mary was finally laid to rest, her visiting presence at the school seemed to dissipate, lifting the eerie aura that had cloaked the property for so long. There was a lighter feeling in the atmosphere, and the students knew their mysterious protector had found peace. A sense of relief washed over Parker Rhodes Elementary as time passed and the ghostly encounter ceased. The students who had experienced the haunting made a solemn vow to keep the memory of Mary Livingston alive in their hearts. They were taught an important lesson about not leaving anyone behind, and they would ensure that their town would never forget the woman who had watched over them for decades. In the years that followed, Mary's tale became a lasting lesson handed down to the town's future generations, serving as a constant reminder of the importance of caring for one another and ensuring that no one is forgotten. El Paso High School in Texas was a beautiful architectural marvel. But below its elegant exterior, a series of dark and inexplicable encounters lurked. It was no secret that the school had a reputation for paranormal activity, mystifying those who walked its hallowed halls and leaving them questioning the nature of the unexplained occurrences. Over the years, El Paso High School has become the stage for various strange events. Hallways would often be filled with swirling mist, and an unexplainable goo would sometimes drip from the ceilings. The school's basement revealed even more disturbing secrets, a series of hidden classrooms, abandoned and obscured by time, buried beneath the building's foundations. As the class of 1985 prepared to graduate, they gathered for the fateful yearbook photo. 
little did they know that they were about to immortalize a mysterious and ghostly visitor. The photograph captured a young girl in white, an enigma to everyone who saw her in the picture. She wasn't present during the shoot, and there were reports from the students that they experienced sweaty palms during the photo session. With no identification and a negative lacking her presence, the ghost girl became the centerpiece of wild theories and rumors about her origins. She was rumored to have been a student who studied in one of the hidden classrooms beneath the building, waiting to make her presence known. The tale of the ghost girl piqued the interest of alumni and faculty members who began sharing their own spooky encounters within El Paso High School. Reports ranged from seeing hundreds of ghostly figures holding midnight pep rallies in the courtyard to disembodied voices cheering on phantom basketball games in the auditorium. Driven to uncover the truth about these paranormal claims, the local community launched an investigation into the school's history. They excavated the hidden classrooms, finding ancient artifacts and textbooks from years long past. Historical records divulge the tragic story of a girl who died mysteriously many decades ago. The community became convinced that her spirit somehow lingered on, with her story now intertwined with the school's legacy. The class of 1985's yearbook photo was placed in a trophy case at El Paso High School, serving as a constant reminder of the uncanny events that surrounded the institution. The ghost girl in white attracted visitors who sought answers or perhaps just a glimpse of the mysterious apparition. Try as they might, no solid evidence could be found to explain the series of strange events that took place within the school's walls. Instead of fearing the unknown, the students and faculty learned to embrace their school's haunted heritage. They chose to honor the memories of the spirits that seemed to share their space, acknowledging that even the unknown has a story to tell. Decades have passed, but the tales of El Paso High School live on. The students carry on the stories of the ghostly figures and the girl in white, creating a connection with their school's enigmatic past. As new generations walk the halls, they inherit the legacy of the mysteries that infuse their school and learn to appreciate the allure of the unknown. And so, the elusive echoes of El Paso High School continue to captivate and mystify, forever etching their mark on the annals of local lore.